We're going to be doing squat complexes. So it's going to be the hard, last hard workout. Then Sue's going to run you over with a biceps and triceps workout this afternoon. So we're going to leave nothing in the tank for this morning. What we'll be doing is still applying uh, the active rest concept. I just want to like, just make sure that everybody understands that the active rest concept is basically hey, acting, keeping the body active during the workout, but while providing rest for the working muscles. So the principle is to work an unrelated muscle to the lift you're doing. Uh, so that actually keeps the heart rate up. It will create a more favorable hormonal milieu for maximum strength gains, size gains, and body fat loss. By keeping the heart rate up, you also affect body composition positively. And it's just more work, so it allows you to cram more uh, muscle building stuff in the same period of time. So active rest is a good way to increase volume without having to spend four hours in the gym. So with legs, uh, what we'll be doing for active rest work is going to be four arms. So we'll have several stations for, for our legs, obviously. We'll start with the club half squat, your favorite one, and it's going to be regular back squats. With the back squats, you'll be doing kettlebell hammer curls. So you grab it with the parallel handle and you curl like this. Hammer curls work mostly the brachialis, and brachialis responds better to slower contraction types and isometric holds. So with doing this movement, you'll use a slightly uh, control, a slower tempo than usual. So probably two seconds up, two seconds down, and a hard squeeze at the top. Don't just hold it in place. Try to really squeeze the weight up. You're up here, squeeze hard, and then when you go down, the bicep still is squeezed so hard, you have to use your triceps to bring the weight down. So that's gonna be the active rest period for the back squat. Next movement will be the speed squat with chains. You'll be using 50 pounds of what you're using on the regular squat, not on of your maximum, but 50% of what you're using here. We're going to focus more on speed. It's going to be explosive, still control the way down, reverse quickly and explode your way up. The assistance movement for this one will be the horse hammer. Now, the, the longer you, the shaft, the harder it is. So you can start here. And if you find that's too easy, you can just work your way down. Support your form here. Slow rotation, all the way, pause. Rotation the other way, like this. Again, relatively slow contraction, constant time under tension. If it's too easy, just lengthen the lever. The next one will be jump squats with kettlebell. If you don't do that with your ankle, probably not. Exactly. Uh, just skip this one. No, no need for replacement. So you hold the <laughs> kettlebell on your chest, and your jump as high as possible. The, act, uh, the active rest for this one will be standing. Wrist curls, here. Two seconds contraction. Again, same principle as with calves and traps. The range of motion is really short. So to really make it effective, you have to really squeeze the peak contraction, lengthen the time of attention, three seconds, release, up, Full contraction, squeeze here, relax. So that's the active rest for uh, the, jump, uh, the jump squat. Then the next one will be prowler walking backwards. Now the important thing when you're doing backward drags is not to use your body weight excessively to, live, to, do, to move the prowler. A lot of people keep their legs straight and they just walk like this. It's not a bad exercise for calves. Actually, it's probably one of the best ones you can do. But we want to use that to focus more on the quadriceps. So you'll use a slightly squatted down position. Keep your torso at least straight, if not leaning forward. And you walk back with a good leg extension. It's going to be one length, two lengths. The active rest will be striking on the tire with a sledgehammer. Squeeze the bar hard with your hands to involve the forearms even more. I really like tire striking to build forearm strength and especially reactive capacity. Reactive capacity means a reactive contraction upon impact. 
it's very important for many sports you have to absorb force suddenly so by striking on the tire it creates a reactive contraction of the form and wrist muscle of the hand muscle and form muscle so it actually improves the neural capacity to fire those muscles so working on the sledgehammer striking will increase growth potential of the forearms and they will respond better to other exercises specifically for them. So that's going to be uh, the active rest for the problem. After that it's going to be body weight squats as many as you can in one minute. So fast reps, explosive reps and you start the complex over again. Right? Let's do it. Uh, you start first by uh, ramping up on the back squats at the five